This conference will now be recorded. Yipes. Oh. <laughs> Can you hear me okay, Matt? Okay, sir, if you wouldn't mind uh, muting your, we're going to mute everybody's uh, microphone here in a moment. And then, counselor, you're going to have to unmute yours again, okay? Okay. And Carrie, are you happen to be uh, on? Yes, I'm right here. All right, great. And Dan, Jesse? Okay. We'll hold off for a few moments, maybe start a little bit late. I'm going to give Dan a quick call. Okay, stand, sounds good. Everybody stand by. We'll uh, get back to it here in a few minutes. Hello, Rita. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> hey, Carrie. Hello, Anna. Oh. Pardon me? Hi, Carrie. I guess you're my default look, uh, Rita. Your face <laughs> comes up every time the camera stops going to somebody else. <laughs> oh, that's so exciting. Hey, Carrie, have you planted your cucumbers yet? No, I haven't gotten any. Well, get on it, Carrie. All right. Next week. Awesome. Carrie, are you just on your telephone? Yes. Am I not showing up visually? Uh, you're not for me. Oh, good. <laughs> Carrie, do you see, is there a button on your phone that has a video visual? Uh, it's, uh, all I've got is it's going back and forth between uh, you, Paulina, and Rita right now. If you I, touch the screen, does anything come up? The screen. It's got... Um, <clears throat> the camera is uh, slashed out. Click on that slash. For the purpose of. So we can see it in my face. Yeah, we just want to make sure it's really you. To take <laughs> pictures and record <laughs> video. Okay, there you go. All right. We're working out uh, just a few other bugs. Yeah. Uh, we have somebody who's got a, a busy signal, so they're trying to call in. And Dan is calling in again. Dan, are you here yet? Hi, Carrie. Carrie? There, go. there goes Carrie. I'm sorry, oh. what? You were there for a second, Carrie. We saw you. And now I'm not? Now you're not. Yeah, at the bottom of your screen, there's a little camera image. And if you click that camera image that's red, it'll turn green. And sometimes you have to wake your computer up to make that camera image come up. There you are. We can see you, Gary. Great. Thank you very much. I know what to do when I want to go off screen. <laughs> and Dave Larmer, how are you? Pardon me? I see Dave and BB. Yeah. Hi, baby. Hello, Dan Jesse here. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. So we got Dan here. He called in again, and, and uh, Christy's going to go ahead and label Dan. Dan, can you say something again so we make sure we have the right one? Yes, this is Dan. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. Hey, this is technology. What could go wrong? <laughs> Okay. So, um, all the counselors are here. We've got Dave here. Uh, Dave. We have Gail Como. Gail? 
Christy is um, monitoring and I'm ready. Are you ready to go? Okay, uh, so it sounds like everybody is ready. Um, so we'll go ahead and um, officially open uh, the May 6, 2020 City Council meeting uh, online. This is a new one for, for all of us and uh, it's, it's really good to see your faces. I miss, miss you all and um, glad everyone could be here tonight. And it looks like we have some uh, visitors as well. Um, so we'll have our visitor section uh, here in a little bit. It'll be a three minute visitor section. Uh, for those that uh, do want to speak during the visitor section, there, um, there was an email sign in, which is uh, chadsuite at cityofgearheart.com. And folks can email their name, address, and the topic. And then we'll call on you during the visitor section to speak for three minutes. Uh, we've already got uh, a few signed up, uh, but you're welcome to sign up during the meeting as well. And then, uh, Chad, you'll uh, be able to read the names off to us uh, when that time comes. Okay. Uh, right along, everyone. Uh, is there any declaration of a conflict of interest from any of the counselors at this time? No. None. No. No. Uh, no. No for me as well. Except, uh, we have the approval of the minutes. Uh, our April meeting, of course, was canceled, uh, but the approval of the minute, uh, meeting minutes for the regular meeting of March 4th, 2020. Uh, does anybody uh, have any comments or would like to make a motion to approve? I make a I'm, motion make to a approve. Motion. I okay. second. All right, we have uh, Councillor Cockrum with a motion to approve and Councillor Smith with, with a second. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, that was a unanimous uh, motion passed. Uh, Planning Commission report, of course, the April meeting was canceled there as well, so no report this time. Uh, however, I believe, Chad, uh, they were going to do a go-to meeting, go meeting for this month as well. Is that correct? That's correct. We actually have a, a public, uh, public hearing set up and all the information is available online. Okay, wonderful. Except, we look forward to that. Except for the meeting, uh, uh, information for the go to meeting account on that. We haven't put that out there yet, but we wanted to make sure we had a good test tonight. Okay, knock on wood. So far, so good. Uh, next up, uh, we have the merits report. And um, I do have a, a few things to go over uh, really quickly here. Um, first of all, I just want to say uh, to all our your heart friends and residents, uh, you're all doing a great job. And I know that uh, things are tough for a lot of folks, uh, some, some a lot harder than others. And um, everyone I've talked to uh, has uh, tried to remain hopeful and positive and is doing a wonderful job of keeping social distancing, uh, of getting out and getting exercise, um, and uh, obviously of not letting up, even though uh, other parts of the country are starting to open up a little bit. Um, people are still taking this very seriously. I see a lot of folks wearing masks, and I, I just want to say thank you to all of our residents. want to give a special shout out to our second homeowners as well. Um, uh, several of, of them have decided to hunker down here in Gearheart and um, have uh, been a great part of the community as well. Um, want to thank you for um, being considerate for, for all of our homeowners actually to being considerate of everyone else's uh, space and, um, and trying to stay healthy. Uh, it uh, means a lot and it shows the community is, is really together on this and taking this very seriously. Um, so thanks a lot, please, please keep up the hard work. Um, we still have, uh, you know, a lot to, um, a lot going on before we get back to normal, obviously. Um, so please continue to do what you're doing. Um, please continue to, to give us feedback and, um, you know, we're here to help. Um, one other thing, reminder is that um, the firefighters have um, offered to provide assistance for folks. Um, if somebody needs to get groceries or prescriptions or just needs help with anything else, uh, part of daily life 
uh, please give them a call. Our volunteers are here to help and they're doing a wonderful job. Um, totally just for goodwill purposes and um, helping a lot of folks out. If you call 503-738-7838, is that correct, Chad? Um, the firefighters are here for assistance for uh, anyone that needs it. So I think that's a really great deal. Um, uh, I want to let everyone know too that um, I've been in constant contact with all of the other mayors, with the governor's office uh, and with county officials as well. Um, the mayors and I, we, at least two of us are talking almost every every night, every day. Uh, once a week, we, we're doing a conference call, uh, all five mayors of Clatsop County. And um, a few weeks ago, we we had the governor's office on, on the phone um, trying to ask questions and go over some of uh, the reopening phases and how that uh, may or may not play out. Um, last week, we had the county administrator uh, Don uh, Bone on the uh, on the phone as well, and went over uh, some of the county's um, concerns and ideas about reopening as well. Um, I want to stress that the mayors are very unified on uh, being very cautious about reopening. Um, we all understand that um, any type of premature op reopening uh, could lead to uh, a definite health risk, um, but also public panic if we if we see what we saw during spring break. So we understand that if we open prematurely, it could just cause another shutdown. Um, so we want to make sure that the cities are all unified, that we're unified with the county, that we're following state guidelines, that um, we're getting all of the current information from um, our health department, local health department, the Oregon health department, uh, the governor's office, and that we're all together on this. And I'm, I'm advising extreme caution. And, um, you know, there's there's obviously a health risk, but, you know, there's a lot of businesses that are pushing to reopen early. And um, I'm a business owner myself, so I understand uh, how we all rely on, on tourism down here. But I just want to say from an ac economic standpoint that waiting to reopen um, and being cautious about that is going to be better than reopening early and getting shut down again. Um, and that second shutdown could last all summer. So we want to be very, very cautious. Um, we, you know, it's a, obviously changing every day and every week with new cases showing up here in Clatsop County. So um, the mayors and I, I just want to reiterate, are very committed to being cautious. We're, we're very unified. Uh, we're talking every day, every week. And we all have the best interests of our citizens um, and the citizens of Clatsop County foremost on our minds. So I wanna reassure everybody that that is our number one priority uh, during all this. Um, just a few things with, uh, speaking of small business, um, you know, we, we've heard some bad news in, in, in our communities about different businesses that, you know, are either temporarily shut down or maybe permanently shut down. Um, you know, we heard some news about our beloved Pacific Way uh, Cafe and Bakery the other day that um, they may be shutting down their dining room permanently. Um, you know, there, there is some encouragement though that they, uh, the reports are that they do uh, want to reopen their bakery and do some to-go items as well. Um, I've been in touch with a lot of local businesses on the coast and there's a lot of good stories coming out as well of, of businesses that are modifying, especially restaurants that are doing takeout and, and are doing it very successfully. And um, my hope is, you know, Pacific Way, when they do reopen the bakery, um, are able to do some of those modifications, whether it's, uh, it sounds like they might do sandwiches to go. Um, hopefully they'll do pizza to go because boy, that Thai chicken pizza is one of my favorite. And I think they would uh, definitely sell a lot of pizzas to go uh, from that bakery. And, uh, if they need an extra delivery driver, I'd, I'd volunteer uh, for free anytime to help those guys out. So I just wanna say too, uh, as someone that runs a couple of small businesses, um, I'm here to help uh, anyone that's seeking guidance or information uh, on any of the SBA loans and emergency loans that are out there. Uh, myself, I've filled out all the applications. I've got it down to a pretty 
pretty good science um, and understand how a lot of these work and I've talked to a lot of other community leaders that are going through the same thing. So uh, just personally, I would be happy to help any business owner in Gearheart with anything they need, whether it's ideas for modifications, uh, health modifications, or any of these emergency grants, please just reach out to me, send me an email. I'd be happy to talk to you on the phone anytime and um, kind of relay some of the success stories that I've heard in Clatsop County as well. Um, as you know, the, uh, the, the uh, governor's executive orders are going now uh, extended through July 6th. Um, that doesn't mean that uh, they may not reopen some things before July 6th, but, but the executive orders go through there. Um, our own county short-term rental and hotel closure um, executive order uh, that Gearheart falls under uh, is going through May 31st so far. They obviously have the um, uh, ability to extend that as well, and we'll be in constant contact with the county to make sure that uh, we are on board uh, with the, all the other mayors when uh, hopefully making those type of decisions. Uh, some people have asked about Fourth of July parade, if if that's still going on or if that's canceled. Um, their, uh, the city of Seaside has canceled their fireworks show. Um, I haven't heard of any cancellations yet on parades, but I'm sure that they're contemplating canceling some of those type of things. And, and Gearheart is probably um, in the same boat. So, uh, you know, there's definitely a possibility that the 4th of July parade could get canceled. Uh, I think it might be a little premature to act on it right now, but I would say uh, it's something that we would definitely consider here in the next uh, few weeks as things progress. Any decision like that, again, will be made on the facts uh, with guidance from the county, with guidance from the other cities as well, and, and hopefully uh, be kind of a unified uh, thing as well. So we're definitely concerned about, obviously, any type of gathering of that of that type. So it's definitely a possibility down the road. And just please put, please stay tuned. We'll give everyone plenty of heads up uh, when that time comes for sure. Um, and, and of course, the governor's orders say that uh, essential travel, if, if the executive orders stay in place, would be through July 6th, which would be after 4th of July anyway. Um, um, just a little bit with COVID-19, and I think Chad's going to update us a little bit more on, on some numbers and things. Uh, but you have probably heard uh, the news of uh, the Bornstein Seafood um, plant and uh, the positive test results that have come um, out in North County. Um, obviously, we're watching that situation. Um, I've been in touch. Uh, we're on a few different email strings with County Health, Mike McNichol. And it sounds like starting next week, there will be um, countywide testing available. Um, I believe the number was, was it 300 per... 300 per day, Chad, or 300 per week? Let me just clarify that really quickly here. I've got an update on that for you, Matt, when you get a chance. Uh, looks like, real quick, uh, Dr. Mike McNichol said they've, uh, just to give you this update, finished testing the Bornstein's employees, uh, 165 total, uh, that they are working on a community testing plan uh, they expect to roll out next Monday or Tuesday. Uh, this is as of today. He uh, gave this update. He said that uh, they are still working out the details and messaging, but explained that tests would be made uh, by appointment drive-through testing. Uh, they're going to kind of set up a drive-through testing station, if you will, uh, and they're probably going to set up at the new hazardous waste center, but that hasn't been confirmed. Um, and then later. There's some update on available testing kits. And I, I just read, Chad, uh, not to cut you off there, but uh, off there. they are able to test 300 people per week. Um, so that's that could be part of, uh, part of what rolls out next week. Um, and it sounds like they're, they're going to try to test anyone that requests a test. Yeah, after the... Uh, after the Bornstein's issue, they have 900 tests remaining. Yeah. 
So, uh, so a little better news on testing. Um, it'll be more readily available. Details to come. This, none of this is finalized yet, but just stay tuned for next week, and, and there'll be a press release, I'm sure, with uh, testing guidelines and who can get tested and um, what the logistics are behind that. So just stay tuned on that. But it looks like it's possible to do 300 tests per week, and that's on top of any testing that's already being done privately at hospitals and doctor's offices. Is that just part of an overall testing strategy, or is that in response to the Borenstein? I think it's a, a testing strategy itself, mm -hmm. um, but obviously good good timing as well as there could be some community um, infection as well, um, either that caused that or uh, from that. So. Um, Hopefully, those that uh, need to get tested and those that want to get tested are are able to do so. And uh, we'll we'll keep that information updated on the city blog as well, and um, on uh, on the city's uh, Gearheart Alerts Facebook page. If you haven't liked the Gearheart City Alerts Facebook page, please get on there. Um, we're all able to send updates on there and links to our city blog. And then I'll send some links from uh, my Facebook page as well. So we'll keep you posted. On all of that. Um, that's about all I have for right now. Chad's got some more details later on, but uh, again, I just want to say great job, everybody. Um, you know, the majority of of folks uh, that I've observed and, and talked to in Gearheart are uh, doing a great job, and uh, I know it's tough out there. I know we're all doing the best we can, but I just want to say thank you and. Um, it's uh, it's good to be able to to see all of you and, and talk to you um, over video. So thanks everybody. Uh, so next up we have the council reports and why don't we start out with Councillor Cockrum? Sure. Uh, just a couple things. Um, the CERT group met on uh, April 28th. We did a ham radio exercise. Those of us that are also hams. Uh, we had seven people participate, and this was a test of uh, both our ability to use uh, the radio at City Hall, uh, as well as our own radios in our neighborhoods, and then relay uh, a message to uh, the firemen, uh, or the EOC, if you will, um, uh, via the TAC-9 fire channel. And uh, some of the things worked pretty well. We were able to get through on the TAC-9. Um, that was on my personal radio, my personal ham radio. And uh, the one at City Hall did not work well at all. So uh, we've got a after action little report pending and some work to do. But overall, it was a pretty good exercise. And I think people were happy that we spent the time doing that. We're going to try it again using the Gerhardt repeater next month. Uh, the only other thing I have right now is uh, we do have two meetings scheduled on uh, the one, Highway 101 safety group, uh, and that will be me along with Carol uh, the, and planning and Jeff Bowman with ODOT. And uh, these are um, pre-evaluation meetings and uh, consensus meetings on uh, how we'll evaluate the project. Um, so those are coming up this month. Wonderful. That's all I have right now. Thank you, Polina. Appreciate that very much. Um, next up, why don't we uh, go to Councillor uh, Rita Fackrell? I don't have anything, but I would like to ask Polina how close she is to finishing the employee handbook? Uh, uh, Chad and I met uh, probably over a month ago now, and the handbook is drafted, and there were a number of items that we discussed adding to the document, which was uh, a model document um, from the risk management company 
uh, that were coming from the old document, the 1995 document. And so I have not seen a draft of those two put together, but uh, Chad could fill us in any more on that. Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, thank you, Polina, for all your work on that. Uh, the document, I think, is ready to print and give to Polina for one more look. And then uh, we'll be discussing it uh, probably in a work session soon. Thank you. And then uh, the, the fireman's ball is canceled as well. Is that true? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, we made the call to go ahead and close uh, or cancel the fireman's ball for this year. Okay. Uh, and so, but we still are ordering all of our goodies, being uh, the sweatshirts, the t-shirts and all of that. So the association uh, is working on putting together an online store through their website. And uh, we'll be sending out letters to everybody in Gearheart, letting them know of the ball cancellation, and then asking them hopefully to continue to donate to the association. Uh, it's a fundraiser that they use to buy a lot of uh, necessary equipment for the fire department. And then, uh, uh, with that store set up, you'll be able to buy your quarter zip hoodies, t-shirts, and things like that online. And that will probably go uh, year round, uh, at least for a year. We'll get, give it a shot, see how it works. Uh, they were pretty bummed not to put it on. Uh, we're going to miss seeing all the people there and uh, the gambling and the, the, the fun. But uh, we'll be back uh, hopefully next year and uh, move forward. All right. I have nothing else. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Um, Next up, let's go to Commissioner, or sorry, Councillor Carrie Smith. Okay, the only thing I've got to report is I was involved with the CERT exercise on the ham radio since I'm a ham radio operator and uh, it was good. Uh, I learned a lot and that's all I've got. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, Councillor uh, Jesse. Yes, I, I don't have anything uh, to report other than I really would like to give a shout out to the fire department. Um, in my absence several weeks ago, my in-laws had a smoke detector that was going off and driving them and their dog nuts. And um, I called and, and made a request that somebody come help. And uh, two gentlemen did that and took care of their issue, which was fabulous. And, um, and I hear they enjoyed some great cookies, so they can be bribed. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, the, the fire chief is right here. He heard that, Dan. Thank you very much. And by the way, those were very good cookies. <laughs> well, it was greatly appreciated. So uh, I just want to, you know, they really will come running if you, if you have a need. So thank you. Well, that, that's great, Dan. Thank you very much for that story. Uh, Yes, our volunteers are here to help, and um, you know we're very thankful to have them, and they've um, they've done a great job for us as usual. So thank you again. Um, any uh, anyone else? That that's everybody for the reports. Um, city officer reports. Now I believe uh, the police and fire report are uh, are those. Did everybody receive a copy of those? Uh, we got them via via the blog. Okay. Any comments or uh, on, on those for now? No. Okay. No. No. Okay. Uh, city treasurer report. Uh, does anyone have anything to add about uh, the uh, income statement in our packet? I do not. Not at this time. Okay. Then we have budget, uh, some budget here coming up as well. Uh, next up, we have our city attorney. Oh, is Peter here? No. Peter's here. No, Peter. Yeah, you need a moment to unmute. Uh, I'm going to temporarily unmute all the callers. Can you? Hello? Peter, are you there? Hey, Brown. Yes, I am. 
Um, there has been, um, I've, um, I have been coordinating with the other city attorneys a bit, uh, we've, and county council, we've had some good conversations. And um, other than that, uh, no imminent legal issues. I, I will say I'd like to compliment uh, our council and mayor and, and administration. You know, a lot of a lot of cities from a budgetary standpoint are really um, unfortunately not in the kind of shape that, that Gearhart is um, through, you know, the choices that you as a council have made and, and uh, the administration have made. Um, we're just um, so much better positioned than than some other um, some other jurisdictions. That's going to allow us to continue providing the same level of city service. And so, uh, a large amount of credit to to all of you. Thank, thank you, Peter. Um, we appreciate that very much, and thank you to our our budget committee and of course our budget officer Chad Sweet for. Uh, controlling expenses very well and, and um, helping us create a, uh, a surplus every year instead of a budget deficit and that uh, in times like this that's, an, that's very important. Um, next up we have uh, our city uh, administrator Chad Sweet is going to give a city update and talk a little bit more in detail about uh, COVID-19 update as well. Okay thank you mayor and counselors and uh folks. So uh, staffing wise, we're doing pretty well. Uh, our staff is uh, in good shape. Families are in good shape. Uh, everybody's healthy for the most part. Uh, fire departments are still responding to calls. Uh, the police department is doing really well. Uh, and the administrative staff, we're rotating through here uh, still. Uh, the city hall is closed to the public and probably will remain so likely through the end of the month. And then we'll go from there. But we're really not missing a beat. Uh, all uh, city departments are running. Uh, nobody is uh, really waiting for anything. Uh, we're doing a lot of business licenses. We're doing uh, a lot of still uh, building is happening, uh, which is nice to see. So we're uh, taking care of the uh, the building permit needs uh, without much of a hiccup. Um, so that's you know kind of the state of the city i uh, i think the city's looking really good the public work staff has been out there busily making it uh, uh beautiful uh for us especially seeing as how a lot of people are walking and things like that we notice that people for the most part are you know keeping separate which is nice um we have kept the 10th avenue beach approach i've been keeping the council in the loop about that and i think we've all chosen to keep the 10th Street Beach approach closed for the moment. Uh, and what that does is, is more of a visual reminder for people to, you know, maybe stay home uh, unless it's necessary or just to go out and, and walk. The, the county has uh, kept Delray and Sunset Beach approaches open. So those are being used. But uh, so far, I think I've got the support of the council uh, in regards to just keeping that closed to minimize uh, traffic through town. Um, we're getting a lot of calls about razor clamming. There's some good tides coming up. There's some good weather coming up. So we're probably going to see uh, a, a bit of an influx of people that choose not to stay home and stay safe. So uh, we're going to see a little bit of that. Um, I'm not sure if the county is going to keep the beach accesses open or closed, but they are monitoring it. And uh, the sheriff's department will be monitoring that. And uh, they may make a decision to close it uh, partway through a day or what have you. Um, so any questions about those two items yet? I've got some more after that. No, uh, it's going to be some nice weather coming up, uh, for sure. So, uh, we're getting a lot of, you know, some calls from, uh, people that have rented homes for an upcoming vacation. They, uh, are curious as to what Gearheart's going to do. So, uh, like Matt was, was talking about earlier, we're really just kind of going along with the county at this moment. And um, so far, everything's been closed down for that period of time. And, uh, you know, it's just a few calls on that. Way more calls about razor clamming, actually. Um, some COVID updates. Uh, and this is available online, but I'll just kind of give a brief uh, update on some things. In Oregon, uh, as of this morning, this is first thing this morning, this report comes out at 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, Oregon, we're up about 3%. 
uh, for number of confirmed cases. Washington is up 1%. Uh, I just did a little math and it looks like about 80 new cases for Oregon and 122 for Washington. Uh, Clapper County adjusted their numbers down a little bit. I don't know if they had a positive or a false positive. I wasn't able to follow up on that yet. Um, what was that? Um, those, some of the people were from Long Beach, so they didn't get counted in Clapper County. Oh, gotcha. So, so I guess some people were uh, counted incorrectly into the community is what Bill Eddy, uh, Chief Eddy, just told me. Uh, Columbia County is, is still uh, 0% and Pacific uh, County is 0% and for the nation we're up about 3% in deaths uh, and in Oregon about 4%. So any questions about those raw numbers? Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, just a few things. Uh, there is a, a public health incident management team in place with the county and they're working really closely with all of us. Uh, Chief Bill Eddy is on three or four uh, conference calls every week, working with chiefs, working with the county, working with the emergency operations center. So Chief Bill Eddy has been our representative for that. He's done a great job. He had to suffer through quite a few meetings, but uh, he's doing he's doing all right. Um, the Dr. McNichol uh, again said they finished testing board scenes, and uh, they are going to start moving out into some of the other uh, canneries and things. Also, we talked about the community testing plan. Uh, a, a little bit, so stay tuned for that news. Um, there is a joint information call center uh, that's available. Uh, Tom Bennett uh, with the uh, county and the emergency department, uh, they are taking calls if you have questions and they do have a lot of good information. And uh, so that's moving forward. Uh, Kevin uh, Leahy, as you mentioned, Matt, is still working with Cedar and he's doing a lot of the economic recovery work and so he is through Clapper Community College, through that's where his offices are located. So you can get online and find some information there. There's some good stuff. Uh, looks like I, Jennifer Purcell, she's a representative of the state of Oregon. Uh, she, she's not a representative, excuse me. She represents the governor uh, in our conversations. And uh, she expects the governor to conduct another press conference either Thursday or Friday, uh, May 7 or 8, regarding reopening, regarding sector guidance. And they're kind of finalizing some of that guidance for restaurant retail. Um, she referred to a press release earlier in the week regarding reopening of recreation uh, sites across the state on a limited basis. And she wanted to clarify that the Columbia Gorge and the Coast were called out in an article uh, as not being ready. And so that was from uh, the governor herself. Uh, and Don Bone, the county manager, is working on a reopening plan uh, that would serve to kind of confirm a required level of preparedness. And uh, that criteria has to be approved by the governor. So they're just working on the plan. I haven't heard of any other details other than what you mentioned, yep. Matt. Uh, and then Seaside is, you know, let's see, uh, Mike received the 1,100 kits. They have 900 remaining as of this morning. And then um, that's my COVID update. Any questions from the counselors? Nope. Okay. And uh, I think that's all that I have to update unless there's other questions about what I did. I just have one comment. Um, I, I have been staying home most of the time, but when I do go to the post office, uh, the last couple days I've noticed um, 20 to 40% of the people going into the post office with a mask. Um, small sample, it's only two times, but any kind of reminders we can do to have people wear masks, especially when they're in the downtown core, would be great. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, that's fine. And, and that helps protect uh, not only the person, but also Karen and, and our uh, wonderful employees at the post office that are um, obviously uh, working hard, working very hard. So shout out to Karen. Shout out to your post office. OK, any other questions for Chad? Okay, thank you very much for the report, Chad. Um, just a reminder, um, anyone that wants to speak at our upcoming uh, visitor section here in a little bit,
please email to sign up. Um, you're going to email Chad Sweet at cityofyourheart.com. I think, Chad, I don't know if you've checked your email, but I've only got one person on the list so far. You're on mute, Chad. <laughs> Yeah, I'm supposed to be the technology guy, aren't I? Uh, yeah, that's uh, we concur. So, uh, chat suite at cityofyourheart.com. Just email him your name, address, and topic, and uh, we can call. We'll call on you here shortly. Uh, so next up, we have correspondence, um, and we did get some correspondence in our packet. Does anybody have any questions or comments on any of the correspondence in the packet? Nope. Okay. No. Okay. No. Okay. Um, so next up, we have our visitor section. Uh, this is a modified visitor section, obviously being online. So we're going to allow three minutes per person. Again, if uh, you haven't s signed up to speak, just email right now. Email Chad Sweet at cityofgearheart.com. Instantly check the email right now, and we'll keep checking here um, to see if anyone else on this call would like to speak. And we do see a few people, uh, visitors on the call as well. So I uh, would love to hear from you if you'd, if you'd like to speak. Um, uh, so far uh, on the list, we have BB Michelle first. BB, how are you? I'm doing fine. Can you hear me? I, we certainly can. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. Yes. Um, so it's all working. I think these meetings are great that we can have the technology to do this. It's wonderful. It's great to see all of you. I wanted to, first of all, just do something simple. I wanted to thank um, the city for putting up the permanent elk signs. The ones that we had at the uh, trailheads were always in danger of, of falling over and being blown over. So the permanent ones look really great and I'm really impressed to see that. I also wanted to thank you very much for uh, the closures of the beach approaches. I think it's very effective and a visual to kind of keep people mindful. And I appreciate the close work that you're doing with the mayors, the county and the state on these issues. It's very complicated, it's very challenging. Uh, I am in support of keeping the city restricted um, because we are no, no way out of the woods yet. And the clamming one is uh, when I've observed uh, the beaches um, it's really busy down there during the height of the clamming, and it's um, it's a problem in my mind because people really aren't quite doing the social distancing that they need to. I'm also quite concerned that uh, we're going to see an increasing amount of public fatigue. You know, we're getting close to you know a month and a half, two months, where we are in this stay home, save lives uh, modality. And even now, when I'm very limitedly going out to even grocery stores, it just seems like people are not uh, being as careful with maintaining social distancing. Um, the, the use of masks is not consistent. I'm also worried that masks are being used inappropriately or that people are feeling like if I'm wearing a mask, I don't have to have the social distance. Because it's distance and a mask, not one or the other. Um, so I'm concerned about that moving forward because I, you know, if we're really going to be successful in reopening our economy, it's going to really require that the public remain very vigilant. And we're seeing what's happening in other parts of the world where people are, you know, gathering um, in close quarters without um, being careful. And, and I'm just concerned that we may see that amongst our um, our community as well. So uh, anything we can do to continue to to get that message out it's going to be important because we need compliance, we need testing, we need tracing, we need um, isolation when it's necessary, and then hopefully we can get back to some, we can move forward into some new normal. So I want to thank you for all that you're doing. That's it. Thank you, BB. We appreciate it. And as always, thank you for the feedback. Um, Chad, do we have anyone else on the list? that wants to speak? Okay. No, we don't, and that's confirmed with uh, Christy also. Okay. Um, well, thank you, and thank you for all that are just listening to the call as well. It's, um, 
uh, to be able to uh, get some of this information out. So moving right along, uh, no ordinances or resolutions, no old business. Uh, we do have some new business. Um, and first up is uh, Recology with the rate changes. And we've got uh, lucky to have Larmouth here again. And uh, we're going to unmute you here today. And uh, if you'd like to go over some of the rate changes and what else is going on with Recology. Dave, can you uh, can you unmute yourself? There we go. Now I was so excited to talk. I even <laughs> thanks for standing by. So uh, thanks again, uh, Mr. Mayor and Councilors, for for having me here tonight. Uh, I got a, a few. Uh, remarks about sort of the general situation and our response, and uh, we'll get down to the uh, to the rates here in a minute. Um, so uh, we're uh, definitely we're pleased to be uh, partners with the city, and we understand that uh, that we're providing an essential essential service, and and we take that uh, seriously. All our routes are currently running. Most of our customer service and office staff are working from home, and our drivers have the supplies uh, they need uh, to protect themselves. And uh, you know, speaking as an office person, frankly, the, the folks out there doing the collection for us are, are really the, the heroes as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, when this all started, we reached out uh, to staff to uh, let you know that you could count on us. Um, we understand the uh, the pressure this situation has, has put on, on residents of Gearheart. And we, we want to ensure you that if residents are dealing with uh, COVID-related challenges, uh, that we will work with them to ensure that everyone could continue to have service uh, at their home. Uh, no one wants trash piling up on the streets. Uh, and uh, but you're, we're, we're your partner in, in good times and, and also in, in these difficult times. Uh, obviously, there are serious impacts of uh, both residences and uh, businesses. Uh, the financial uh, data we uh, presented uh, include projections uh, for, I guess, what you consider for a normal rate year. So it, it obviously doesn't take into account what's currently happening. Uh, yeah, you know, we were so we were just at the start of of this whole uh, crisis when when we uh, pre were preparing those documents. So uh, you you can probably imagine uh, commercial uh, activity is is down. It's about forty percent down in, in Gearheart. We don't have good numbers yet for uh, debris box service. That's a, a, a primarily construction jobs uh, in, in Gearheart. Um, and the impacts have varied depending on on the type of business. So schools, hotels, and restaurants uh, are down. Uh, grocery, uh, for the most part, are, are higher than usual. And um, as I mentioned, for construction and manufacturing, it really varies by by the job site or location whether whether the construction company has, has decided to continue or has taken a pause. Something else that's come up uh, on some news recently that's uh, caused some confusion for customers. Uh, I want to assure you that your recycling is currently being collected and being recycled. Uh, that isn't true everywhere across uh, the country. And so that's, people see a report about something happening one in one area, they, they uh, have been reaching out to us asking, it, if, asking us if that's uh, true for us as well. So your recycling, still getting recycled. Uh, people have asked us uh, how much is being thrown away, and the answer I have is it's really only material that was never supposed to be in the recycling cart uh, in the first place that people have put in by mistake. Uh, things like diapers and frozen food boxes, uh, miscellaneous plastics, that sort of thing. Um, so that's the story on that. Um, I know there's usually some interest in the in hazardous waste. Uh, and the county, as, as you may know, 
uh, opened their the permanent collection facility here at the beginning of the year. They got through a couple of events before this whole uh, virus uh, crisis happened. Um, last that I heard, so I guess as of now, that they are still planning to have events uh, at the hazardous waste facility. Um, that could change. Um, they're scheduled to be one Saturday a month, but I'd encourage you to check the county health department website uh, for any updates they may have, uh, changes in the schedule or in the hours or in um, how many people they'll uh, allow in. Anything like that should be on the county website. Uh, moving on to our uh, financial results. Uh, and projections. There are a couple of new things this year. I just wanted to mention briefly. Um, there, uh, there's a across Oregon. There's a corporate activity tax. Uh, Recology is is a big enough business to have uh, to qualify for that tax. So we've included an estimate uh, in our projections for the uh, for the coming rate year. What we think we will uh, owe to the state. When we come back next year, we'll have a, a much better idea of what that actually looks like. Um, uh, the information that we have is that uh, the governor has, has no plans currently to uh, to waive that tax or delay its implementation. Our first quarter estimated payments are due, uh, and we made them. So we're on track as far as that concerned. The other thing um, to point out on on the a financial report is uh, there's been a change to how we report franchise fees and it's now expressed as a reduction to revenue uh, it doesn't change the key metric that uh, that we use for rate setting which is the operating ratio franchise fees were always subtracted out of revenue and expenses for that calculation uh, so this is simply a way that uh, that our accountants uh, or the accountants that, that that provide advice to our accountants uh, have uh, made a change in, in how franchise fees are expressed uh, due to a ch an update in um, the guidelines that are put out for uh, for accountants. And if you want more information on that, I will put you in touch with someone who can provide you a good answer. But uh, that so that's my best uh, on that. Um, as for the the collection rates, um, we uh, we've proposed a 2.9 percent adjustment for most rates, um, but given the current economic challenges, uh, we're asking uh, to defer that rate until at least September 1st. Um, that change for a 32 gallon cart weekly is is 61 cents a month. For a 90 gallon cart weekly, it, it's, uh, it'd be a dollar two cents a month. Um, we, those are the those are the most common uh, rates, but uh, we could uh, when when we get closer uh, to know once we know that September 1st does look like uh, a reasonable date, uh, we'll provide the city with full rate sheets. Uh, the the timeline. As I understand it, is sometime in mid July, uh, we're going to sit down as a uh, as the local management team and evaluate the state of, of the economy. If, business, if for the most part businesses are back open, things are running as whatever the new normal looks like, um, then we'll send a cover letter and full rate sheets uh, to the city by uh, I believe August 1st, uh, proposing a September 1st. Uh, uh, effective date. If we're not back to normal by it, by mid July, we'll push out that uh, those dates. And uh, my understanding is we'll continue to to evaluate that really on on a month to month basis. Uh, hopefully, um, we'll be back to normal and everything will be great. But we can't you know, we can't predict that for sure. So we'll take it one step at a time. Um, again, we're we're proud to be your your service provider. We look forward to to having a big party uh, once we're all on the other side of this. Um, but for now, that that's all I have. I'm happy to take any questions you have about what I've said or what I've forgotten to say.
Thank you, Dave. Uh, do the counselors have any questions for Dave? No. 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 I would just like to thank you for your considerations of this horrible time we're dealing with. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and Dave, Chad's tweet here. Uh, appreciate the continued work with the brush bin. You guys are great. And also for the donation that you gave the city of Gearhart, uh, recall it, we waived a portion of the um, uh, Earth Day cleanup. So uh, we appreciate you doing that also. I'm glad that worked out. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Dave. We appreciate it. Um, next up, we have uh, in new business, we have adopt uh, the new budget calendar. And um, I will refer to Chad on this one. Thank you, Mayor. So, because of the changes uh, to the day, of course, and to what's been going on the last few months, uh, we weren't able to stick with our initial uh, uh, calendar. So what I'm asking is that the council or the council adopt the a new budget calendar for us and we can move forward. We have already uh, advertised for those dates. We can turn it around if it doesn't absolutely work, uh, but this allows us to go through the budget process with uh, uh, all of the public meetings intact. Any questions from the counselors? I have a question. Um, when we hear the hearings for the state revenue funds, will that be a go-to meeting with all the people who are applying for grants? Those meetings will be go-to, so anybody who wants to participate will have to do it just like we are right now. Can I ask how many people have applied for grants? I, I'll ask Christy that question and okay. get back to you. All right, thank you. They have to apply, they have to be at the meeting in the video conference. Is that correct? Not just a paper application? Uh, yeah, but they, you know, if they're not able to participate for one reason or another and they need to send in a letter or what have you, um, I think we can accommodate them uh, to do that also. But we have made decisions based on whether or not they were at the meeting. Hey, Chad. Yes, Gary. It's a, did we notice the public about the state revenue sharing? Uh, yes, and it's also in the paper, or it should be here now. Okay. I just didn't see it the one time I looked, and I was curious. Yeah, I think it right, was underneath underneath one of the other documents for a period of time and and christy made it so that it was more apparent for sure okay any other questions about this uh this is uh, this is dan I, go ahead go ahead dan well i was just going if there were no more questions i was going to make a motion that we move approve the calendar as presented okay we have a motion from councillor jesse uh to approve do we hear a second i'll second okay we have a second by uh councillor fackerel um any discussion i i do just have one question uh when will we see the draft budget document uh, you'll see it tomorrow morning. Expect a visit from, uh, for the counselors anyway, expect a visit from one of our officers uh, to deliver that to you. Uh, and then it'll be online and uh, blogged tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, uh, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, so motion passes unanimously. Um, that's Thank it. You. 
Okay, uh, next up on the agenda is council concerns, and um, I'd like to start out with Councillor Jesse. I, I have no concerns at this point. Okay, move on to Councillor Fackerel. I have no concerns. Okay, let's uh, move on to Councillor Smith. My only concern is that we're reaching the point where everybody is starting to feel sick and tired of being isolated and social distancing, but we still have to live with this because they don't expect this uh, coronavirus to go away anytime soon. And if we've got another year before we get a vaccine, we've just got to buck up and... Uh, Keep our distance. That's it. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, Councillor Cockrum, Council Concerns. Uh, I I don't have any that I haven't voiced already, and and just to echo uh, the other folks that have spoken about. Um, you know the the physical distancing and the masking and uh, anything we can all do to model the correct behaviors and um, uh, lean in towards it with uh, folks who are not uh, not doing that in our midst. Absolutely. Thank you, Councillor Cockrum. Um, and for me, I, I just want to reiterate, reiterate what Councillor Smith and Councillor Cockrum said that um, I think these words were, were not out of the woods yet. And uh, it's important that you all keep doing a, a great job of social distancing and um, protecting yourself and protecting others. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of, of pressure uh, in Clatsop County for uh, coming from small businesses and business owners wanting to to reopen and I think we all understand that we all want to get our economy back uh, to some semblance of normal um, but you know I think if we do reopen the economy prematurely and we see another spring break type of incident um, that has the potential to lead to a, another shutdown and that shutdown could last all summer. And um, you know, it, it's it's I think wise to show some prudence and um, you know continue to to look at the data, continue to look at the testing abilities, um, and you know continue to um, any way that we can support our local businesses, whether it's getting food to go, um, purchasing gift certificates. Um, just calling your your friends that own a business or your friends that are employed in in a business um, that's struggling right now, um, you know, reach out to them, give them a call. Um, you know, we have some uh, businesses in in uh, in Gearheart uh, that are doing some modifications. I just want to give a quick shout out to them. Um, obviously, we talked about Pacific Way Bakery, and I'm really hoping that uh, uh, they do uh, reopen the bakery. It sounds like. They're looking at possibly June, and uh, we wish them all the success uh, with that modification. And um, and we want John and Lisa to know that we're here to support them. We understand all the hard work that they have done uh, for many years, and how important they are to the community. So um, we we will support them with uh, whatever they offer, and um, and hope that they do get to reopen soon. Um, also, of course. Uh, We've got the Great Wall open for Chinese food to go. Takeout, uh, El Trio Loco uh, is doing takeout. Uh, the Sand Trap uh, at the golf course, McMinimums is doing takeout now. And the Go and the Gearheart Golf Links is, uh, has now reopened as well. So you'll probably see some golfers out there, social distancing, um, no carts are allowed. So you'll see a lot of people walking and that's great. Um, Bowling Alley Fultanos is doing takeout as well. So, um, and Grandma's Kitchen also. Oh, I'm sorry, Grandma's Kitchen um, as well. Any others uh, that, uh, that we didn't mention? I think you uh, covered it. 
So, hmm? so please try to support uh, oh, yeah, very good. local businesses uh, in, in one way or another. And a lot of times it can be reaching out for a phone call. Um, and all businesses in Clatsop County as well. This is a, an extremely tough time. And as you know, a lot of them, uh, a lot of folks that we know are employed with small businesses and, and other businesses here in Clatsop County. And so, of course, our hearts go out to everyone that's struggling right now. And, um, you know, just let people know that you're you're thinking about them. And um, we hope to get through this uh, soon, but also safely. And um, and I think that's the the best way to to go about things. So uh, that's what we're committed to. And um, again, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight and to listening there at home. And we hope to do these a little bit more often. Um, and that's uh, that's all I've got for now. Uh, does uh, does somebody want to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I make a motion that we adjourn our meeting. Do we hear a I'll second? second that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thanks a lot, folks. Uh, have a great night and good luck to everybody. And um, please let us know how we can help with anything, okay? Everybody be safe. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.